My fiance and I have been together for seven years. We have a six month old daughter together and I have an 11 year old and a 12 year old with my ex who passed away in a car accident 10 years ago. My fiance is fantastic. He's great with the kids. He is great to me. He's super attentive and caring and empathetic and has an insane amount of patience. He's never once made me question him. And honestly, our communication is top notch. Of course, we have disagreements, but they are few and far between. Generally speaking, if we run into an issue warranting a deep discussion, we work it out together with no ill feelings. But he wants to move back to his hometown, and he truly did sleep with just about every woman there. Despite what it looks like, his body count doesn't bother me, but his hometown is literally so small, everyone knows everyone, and given how much he got around, you can't even go to a store in that area without running into either someone he's slept with or that person's parents. He doesn't associate with any of these people anymore, though he does have friends in the area who do still associate with multiple women in question. I'm not saying anything would happen, but I really just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to go to a parent-teacher conference with him. He goes to every single one and have to deal with one of his many old partners who just happens to be there with her children, which would likely happen. I don't want to walk into a grocery store or gas station and be met with the, hey, you're Matt's wife, right? I just don't want the attention at all. I moved out of my hometown for this exact reason. Everyone knows everyone. Well, we were in that area last weekend for his family dinner. One of his exes was there. His sister and her are friends now, though they weren't back in the day. It wasn't awkward or anything. She's really cool, actually. But his family was all, when are you guys going to move back this way? I laughed it off. Well, we leave and stop at the grocery store. While we were inside, some guy walks over with his girlfriend and says, Matt, how you doing, bud? And they start a conversation. At some point he goes, you remember Tasha, right? Didn't you guys hook up back in the day? As if it was just a normal conversation. Anywho, he wants to move back. The school system is one of the best in the state there's a lot of work there, there are a lot of nice properties, and it's close to both of our families. My family is in the next town over. But I truly just don't want to deal with it. I enjoy living in the area we are now, where we don't know anyone, and have zero drama. He says he understands where I'm coming from, but keeps saying, you know it's not like that, right? I would literally never do anything to jeopardize us. It's just a better school for the kids and closer to our families. I know I have a past, but I truly would never mess anything up with you. And I know he's telling the truth. His love for me is blatantly obvious. He shows me off literally constantly. I just don't want to deal with it. Am I the idiot? ETA, we already have a nice house where we are currently, and it's only an hour from our family. I work at the hospital here, and he works at a dispensary. The work available near his family is better for him, not for me. I would be taking a pay cut and transferred to a really small hospital. The school I is better there, ranked number two in the state, whereas the school we're currently with is ranked number five, but still a good school. So there are pros and cons. Just thoroughly research the school ranking. It's number two in the county, number nine in the state. I had only gone onto the school's website and seen number two listed and assumed it meant in the state. I was wrong, I apologize. Some individuals have jumped on and started bashing me and my children's dead father, and therefore I will be logging off. Thank you all for your input. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. And please don't listen to people who say you are. You have multiple, very good reasons for not wanting to live there. You will be surrounded by women he slept with, ick. You would have to take a pay cut and have a career downgrade, and you don't want to live in a small town. But here's the thing, even if you didn't have a great reason, let alone three great reasons for wanting to live there, you could still veto it and be well within your rights. You don't wanna live there, so it's off the table. He's not a jerk for wanting to move back at all, but would be the AH if he continues to push the issue when it's so obviously not the right place for you. The well-being of both people in a couple matters, not just one. Comment two. 
if you move to where everyone knows him, you will get more resentful and not want to go out and socialize. He needs to know there are consequences for his actions. Now, if he dates four girls and has slept with four girls, that's a little ridiculous. If he has slept with 30 or 40 women in that town and you run into them, then you are right to feel the way you do. You may be forced to end it. Just be prepared and good luck. Now for the update. Hey everyone, back with an update on the whole moving situation with my fiance, Matt. It's been a tense couple of weeks and I've got to say, things have taken some unexpected turns. So after my last post, Matt and I had another long talk about the move. He was really understanding about my concerns and we decided to put the decision on hold for a bit. We agreed to focus on our family and just enjoy our time without the stress of a big decision hanging over us. But as life would have it, things didn't stay calm for long. Remember how I mentioned Matt's sister is friends with one of his exes? Well, turns out they're more than just friends. They've been secretly seeing each other for a while now, and she's pregnant. Yeah, you read that right. Matt's gonna be an uncle, and his ex is the mother. When we found out, it was like a bomb went off. I was shocked, and Matt was floored. His sister had always been the private type, but this was next level. The news actually brought us closer together, though. We supported his sister and talked about how our family was growing in unexpected ways. It was a reminder that life is unpredictable and we have to roll with the punches. But just when I thought we were getting a handle on things, another curveball came our way. One of Matt's old friends from his hometown reached out to him. They'd lost touch over the years, but this guy was going through a rough patch and needed support. Matt's a good guy, so he started talking to him, trying to help him out. I didn't mind at first, but then I noticed how much time he was spending on the phone with him. It was like every free moment he had, he was talking to this friend. I started to feel a bit neglected, and it didn't help that the kids were picking up on the tension. My 12-year-old, who's always been a bit of a sensitive soul, asked me if everything was okay between me and Matt. It broke my heart to see him worried, so I knew I had to address the issue. Matt and I had a confrontation about it. It was one of those raw, emotional conversations where everything comes out. He admitted he felt torn between helping his friend and being there for our family. He didn't realize how much it was affecting us. We both got pretty emotional, but in the end, it cleared the air. He promised to set boundaries with his friend, and I felt heard and appreciated. Just when things were starting to settle down, the biggest shock of all hit us. Matt got a job offer in his hometown. It was a great opportunity, one that he'd been dreaming of for years. But it meant we'd have to move, and all my old fears came rushing back. We sat down as a family, kids included, and talked it out. The kids were actually excited about the idea of being closer to their cousins and grandparents. They loved the thought of a new adventure. And Matt, he was practically glowing with the prospect of this job. I was torn. On one hand, I wanted to support Matt and give our kids the best opportunities. On the other, I was dreading the thought of facing his past every day. But love is about compromise, right? So I agreed. We decided to move. The next few weeks were a blur of packing and saying goodbye to our current home. It was bittersweet, leaving behind the life we'd built, but also exciting to start a new chapter. The day we moved, I felt a mix of emotions. I was anxious, but hopeful. We've been in Matt's hometown for a week now. It's been... Interesting. I've run into a couple of Matt's old flames, just like I feared. But it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. They were polite, and there was no drama. Matt's been amazing, reassuring me and making sure I feel comfortable. But the bittersweet twist? The job that brought us here? It fell through. The company had some unexpected financial issues, and they had to retract the offer. Matt was devastated, and I felt so guilty for all the stress I'd put him through about moving. Now we're here, in his hometown, without the job that was supposed to be the reason for our move. Matt's looking for work, and I'm settling into the small hospital. It's not what we planned, but we're making the best of it. The kids are adjusting to their new school, and we're slowly getting to know our new community. My sister begs me to be her surrogate, and I agree. 
but when my BF gets too close to my belly, she freaks out and accuses him of crossing a line, so I remind her it's my body, not hers. Hi Reddit, so last year I, 29-year-old female, agreed to be a surrogate for my sister, let's call her N, and her husband, both 27, due to an unfortunate high likelihood of infertility diagnosis in my sister. They didn't, they didn't have the funds to hire an actual surrogate, and I am basically the only person they're actually close with that has a child, a requirement to be a surrogate, meaning I was essentially their only option. I didn't love the idea at first, but after watching them struggle to conceive for the last two years and some light insistence from my sister, I said, okay, they did agree to pay me some form of compensation, but from Googling, it seems like it's maybe 30% of what it would normally cost. Anyway, fast forward to today and I am seven months along and all has gone realistically pretty well. My sister has definitely been checking in on me all the time, but I can't really blame her for that but the problem occurred a couple days ago. So a couple of months ago, I met a guy at a work event, let's call him C, and we hit it off. He has a couple of kids of his own, so he doesn't mind anything about my situation, and it's been going really well. Now that we've been together for a couple of months, I wanted to introduce him to my sister, so I set up a dinner for the three of us, originally four, but her husband couldn't make it, my sister picked me up and drove me over since he was going to meet us there. And as soon as I got in the car, I already felt like she was upset but didn't think anything of it. We sat down at the restaurant and waited until C arrived. He came over and greeted us, giving me a kiss and quickly rubbing my belly, nothing really out of the ordinary, but I could see my sister's eyes bulge. I was super confused but didn't say anything about it. We went about our night and she played nice-ish, but was pretty quiet. And honestly, it was a pretty awkward meal. When we left and I got back in the car, she just unloaded on me, saying how weird it was that he kept touching my belly. I asked her what the hell she was talking about. And she said that apparently, he basically had his hands on it the whole night. And also that it was super weird because it's her baby. I just rolled my eyes and told her, regardless of it being her baby, it was my body which just made her even more mad. I don't know, she hasn't talked to me in the last two days over this. I really don't feel like she has any right to police physical intimacy between me and my boyfriend, just because it's her baby I'm carrying. Like, look, I'm pregnant and I have a boyfriend. Obviously, he is gonna touch my bump. Am I the idiot? Edit, just because I'm seeing this a lot, the baby is not biologically mine. It's her and her husband's. I'm a gestational surrogate. Also, maybe I undersold it in my initial description, but he did touch it a lot more than just when he greeted us. He basically had his hand on it the whole time we weren't eating. I didn't really think anything weird about it, but figured I'd clarify. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. I don't see how she thinks she has any right over who gets to touch your body. He's not touching the baby, he's touching you. That's your decision, not hers. I do think there's more than a small chance that she's nervous and stressed about the pregnancy slash birth going well and lashed out at you, especially since you mentioned she seemed upset before the belly touching. Doesn't make it okay, obviously, but it is something to keep in mind. Weird that she hasn't talked to you. You'd think that someone so worried about their baby would want to not cause stress on the person carrying it. Comment two not the idiot, and honestly, this kind of thing is why surrogacy should and usually does come with intensive therapy sessions as well as legal ones and contracts. She has zero ownership over your body. It's disgusting that she thinks she does when you're doing this amazing thing for her. The effects of pregnancy and childbirth range in severity, but your body will forever be altered because of what you're doing for her and she thinks someone you are in a relationship touching you is over the line. Now for the update. Hi Reddit, a lot has happened since my last post about being a surrogate for my sister N and her husband. I'm now 10 months postpartum and boy, has it been a roller coaster. After the dinner incident with my sister and my boyfriend C, things got even more intense. My sister didn't speak to me for a week, which was painful because we've always been close. She's the one who taught me how to ride a bike when we were kids, 
and I was her confidant when she first started dating. So, this silence was a new low for us. Eventually, she reached out, and we had a long, emotional talk. She admitted she was feeling possessive and scared about the baby, and seeing C so comfortable with my pregnant belly made her feel left out. I understood where she was coming from. After all, she had confided in me about her infertility struggles long before they became public knowledge. We made up, and I thought that was the end of it. But then, a month before my due date, C dropped a bombshell. He confessed that he had developed feelings for me that went beyond our casual relationship. He wanted to be more involved, not just with me, but with the baby too. I was stunned. I had to remind him that the baby wasn't mine to share and that I was just helping my sister. It was a tough conversation and it made me question our relationship. The birth was a whirlwind. Anne and her husband were there and it was a beautiful moment when they held their baby for the first time. I felt a mix of relief and sadness, knowing my part in this journey was over. C was supportive, but I could tell he was struggling with his emotions. After the birth, C and I tried to make things work, but it was clear his attachment to the baby was causing a rift. He would often ask about the baby, and I could see the longing in his eyes. It was hard for me too, seeing my sister with her new family, knowing I had helped create that, but wasn't a part of it. Then. Two months ago, Inn's husband got a job offer in another state. It was a great opportunity for him, and they decided to move. I was devastated. I had grown attached to the baby, even though I knew I shouldn't have. Saying goodbye was one of the hardest things I've ever done. C and I broke up shortly after. It was mutual. We realized that our relationship had been built around the pregnancy, and without that, we didn't have as much in common as we thought. He was a great guy but it was the right thing to do. Now I'm rebuilding my life. I see pictures of the baby on social media and my heart aches a little, but I'm also filled with pride for what I did for my sister. As for C, we're still friends and he's dating someone new, which I'm genuinely happy about. Mom tries to steal my husband and ruins baby shower with her news. So we move countries to escape her, but she threatens to sue us for grandparents' rights and puts our family in jeopardy. I was advised to put the entire situation here as I'm still struggling to understand and figure out what to do. I apologize it's long-winded, but I really need some advice or anything. I, 24-year-old female, have been with my husband, 25-year-old male, for over 10 years now, and we have twins, age three. We got engaged a day before we found out I was pregnant. My father left my mother due to her constant cheating and bullying behavior to which he remarried. My mother never remarried or had other children. The issues arose on my 16th birthday when I went to live with my dad due to emotional abuse from my mother. Things like my mother pushing for me to break up with my husband because she, in her own words, wanted him and he was the man for her, not me, because she said I was fat and ugly. I went very minimal slash no contact until I found out I was pregnant as I wanted my children to have a relationship with their grandmother which would have been minimal. I found out she had been to therapy and counseling and assured myself she had changed, to which over time I believed her really hard. This was the beginning of my nightmare. At the time, I was seven months pregnant. She decided to come to my baby shower and declare her love for my husband and demanded he get her pregnant and I terminate my boys because she deserved my life and children rather than me. She even suggested if I didn't terminate, she could adopt them and pretend she was the mother and play happy families with my partner. We had no contact, however, I updated her when my boys were born healthy and happy, but I didn't send her a picture. Life moved on until my boy's first birthday when she turned up and ran towards what she thought were my children. They weren't, screaming, hi, it's grandma. We informed her she had no right to be here, at which point she left. After a year of building trust and seeing the effort she put into changing, I started allowing her to come to the park with myself and family, just in case she pulled anything, which later progressed to things like lunches, soft plays, days out, etc. A week before my husband and I were meant to be flying out to get married, my mother told everyone she had a surprise. That's when she announced she was pregnant, which came as a big shock. Then she announced who the father was and that they were engaged. 
I was angry, hurt, disgusted, disrespected, and I burst out crying. She called me overdramatic, to which I shouldn't have said, but I did in front of everyone. You destroyed my childhood with your constant cheating and abuse. You tried stealing my partner, staging he sexually guess, attacked you after you tried forcing yourself on him to end our relationship. You told me to terminate your own grandchild because you said you deserved them and my partner, and now you've pulled this stunt. Then I walked out and many followed to see if I was okay, which at that time I wasn't. My husband and I talked about everything from start to now. We decided to get married and cut them completely out. We stayed at our wedding venue for 10 nights and did a week-long honeymoon with the boys and a week without. However, as soon as we got back, we got back to a barrage of missed calls, voicemails, and messages from different numbers, which subsequently got blocked. Shortly after this, my mother turned up protesting that we spilt and give our babies up for adoption or hand them over, as we are horrible and don't deserve our boys. She said we will be siblings, and siblings shouldn't be having children. She said we are an incestuous family, and she'll be ringing CPS. That's when my usually calm, level-headed husband exploded, berated her, and physically removed her from our property. We've been looking at moving before the twins were born, and we have the opportunity to move abroad via my husband's work. However, we've been told this is a step too far, and what we've done is disgusting regarding my mother by my mother's side of the family, apart from my grandmother and aunt. Am I the idiot for getting married and moving away from the crazy train? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. You would only be the jerk if you keep allowing your mom back into your life. No caring mother would demand their daughter to terminate a pregnancy because they deserve that life more. After years of continuous emotional and mental abuse, you should go completely no contact. She doesn't deserve to know anything about you or your family's life. She intentionally became pregnant to tie herself to your husband's life. She is not a safe individual for your family to be around. Stay strong and keep your family safe. Comment two, I am assuming your mom is immensely mentally insane. So this means you can never be the jerk when it comes to her. If getting away to a whole other country will rid you of that demon, AKA your mother, then do it. Now for the update. Hey everyone. Thanks for all the comments and support on my last post. It's been a tense few days and I've got a lot to update you on. Buckle up because things have gotten even crazier. So after my husband and I decided to cut my mother out of our lives and consider moving abroad, we thought we'd get some peace. But nope, the drama followed us like a shadow. Just three days ago, my mother showed up at our doorstep again, this time with a man I'd never seen before. She claimed he was a lawyer and that she was going to sue us for grandparents' rights to see the twins. My husband, who's always been the rock in our relationship, lost his cool. He told them to leave or he'd call the police. They left, but not before my mother threw a tantrum on our front lawn, screaming about how we were robbing her of her rights. Now, let's rewind a bit to give you some context. My husband, let's call him Mark, has been my rock since we were teenagers. We met in high school, and he was there for me when I had to move in with my dad. He's always been the calm and collected one, especially when dealing with my mother's antics, but seeing him so angry and shaken up was new and heartbreaking. The next day, we found out that the man with my mother wasn't a lawyer at all. He was just some guy she'd convinced to pose as one to intimidate us. That's when we realized she was getting desperate and it was getting scary. But here's the heartbreak. Amidst all this chaos, Mark and I started to feel the strain on our relationship. We've always been a team, but the stress was becoming too much. We had a huge fight, something we rarely ever do. It was about whether we should actually move abroad or stay and fight my mother legally. I wanted to leave it all behind, but Mark felt like running away would just be giving in to her madness. It was a heated argument, and for the first time, I saw a crack in our once unbreakable bond. The following day, my grandmother, who's been supportive of us, called to tell me that my mother had been spreading lies about us in the family. She was telling everyone that Mark was controlling me and that I was too blind to see it. My grandmother didn't believe her, of course, 
but it was still a blow to hear that my own mother was trying to tarnish the image of the man I love. Now, let's talk about my dad. He's been remarried for a while now, and his wife has always been kind to me. They've been supportive of our decision to cut ties with my mother, but even they were starting to feel the pressure from her relentless attempts to disrupt our lives. Just yesterday, we received a letter in the mail. It was from my mother, and it was filled with the most hurtful things anyone could say. She accused us of being unfit parents and said that we were making a mistake by staying together. She even had the audacity to say that Mark was just like my father, implying that he would leave me eventually. That hit a nerve because Mark has been nothing but loyal and loving. We're at a breaking point. The constant attacks on our family and our marriage have taken a toll on us. We're still planning to move abroad, but now there's this fear and sadness that wasn't there before. The fear that maybe my mother's craziness will follow us no matter where we go, and the sadness that our once happy family is being torn apart by someone who's supposed to love us. I never thought I'd have to protect my children from their own grandmother. But here we are. Mark and I are trying to hold on to each other, to remember the love that's gotten us through 10 years together. But it's hard when every day brings a new challenge, a new attack on our family. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.